Since I believe that gang stalking is fundamentally a demonic activity that we can look to in our world, I want to read from you a chapter from The Strategy of Satan, How to Detect and Defeat Him. This is chapter 9, titled Satan's Army. Since Satan is a created being, he is not like God in being all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere present. Theologians call these attributes omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence. Satan appears to be omnipresent because he has a demonic army assisting him in his warfare. There is only one devil, but there are many demons. There are some basic facts you need to know about demons. Their origin. Skeptics try to tell us that there are no such beings as demons, that this whole idea is but a remnant of ancient myths and superstitions. But if we accept the authority of the Bible, we must believe in the existence of demons. The Lord Jesus believed in demonic forces and often delivered helpless people from their powers. Jesus taught that there was a definite enemy named Satan and that he ruled over a kingdom of evil beings. Since Jesus came, quote, to bear witness to the truth, end quote, John 18.37, we must believe that what he said was truth and not merely accommodation to the superstitions of the people. It seems likely that demons are the angels who revolted with Lucifer and fell with him. Isaiah 4, 12-15, Revelation 12, 3, and 12, 4. Jesus spoke of, quote, the devil and his angels, end quote, in Matthew 25, 41. Nowhere does the Bible teach that demons are the spirits of the wicked dead returned to earth, or that they are the spirits of some pre-Adamic race. The description given of demons certainly tallies with what we know of the character of Satan. Demons are unclean spirits, Matthew 10.1. They encourage people in moral filth. Certainly the frightening increase in pornography and sex worship is due to the activity of demons. They are called wicked spirits, Matthew 12.45. Apparently there are degrees of wickedness among the demons. It is not difficult to believe that demons are behind the wickedness mankind is committing today. They are also called evil spirits. The word evil, according to the Greek lexicon, carries the meaning of, quote, base, worthless, vicious, degenerate, end quote. Satan himself is called, quote, the evil one, end quote, Matthew 13, 19. If you want to know the depths to which these evil beings can lead a man, read about the two demoniacs in Mark 5, 1 to 20. It is interesting to note that the demons have faith in God as well. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. James 2.19 Demonic faith is certainly something less than saving faith. The demons believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Luke 8.28, and that there is a future judgment awaiting them, Luke 8.31. They always feared when Christ or one of his servants came on the scene. Their organization Satan is a destroyer and a divider when it comes to the church, but in his own kingdom, he is very well organized. Please do not get the idea that Satan today is reigning in hell and that all of his agents are sent forth from the pit. Satan is the, quote, prince of the power of the air, end quote, Ephesians 2.2. 2. And he, open quote, prowls about like a roaring lion, end quote, on the earth, 1 Peter 5.8. See also Job 1.7. His army is busy, assisting him in his battle against God and God's people. Jesus called Satan, quote, the ruler of the demons, end quote. Matthew 12.24. Paul described Satan's hierarchy in Ephesians 6.12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is the picture of an organized kingdom, an organized army. Daniel 10.13 indicates that Satan has special angels assigned to the nations of the earth. The answer to Daniel's prayer was delayed because God's angel had a battle with, quote, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, end quote. This account reveals the importance of prayer in the accomplishing of God's will in this world, and also the opposition of Satan when the believer prays. Satan and his hosts are organized. 
If only believers could be united in their defense and their warfare, Satan would not win so many victories. Sad to say, Christians too often are so busy fighting one another that they have no time for fighting the devil. As Lord Nelson said to two officers who were quarreling, Gentlemen, there is but one enemy, and he is out there. Their operation. Like their master, demons are deceivers and destroyers. John 8:44. Not all sickness is demonic. Jesus commissioned his disciples to, quote, heal the sick, cast out demons. Matthew 10.8, making a distinction between the two. But demons can cause physical affliction. They can make people dumb, Matthew 9.32, blind, Matthew 12.22, and crippled, Luke 13.11. They can torment people, Matthew 15.22, and even drive them to suicide, Matthew 17.14. There is no question that some bodily affliction is caused by demons. But like their master, Demons seek to deceive. They are the teachers of false doctrine, 1 Timothy 4.1. They are the promoters of the occult in various forms of divination, Acts 16.16-18. 16, 16 and they are the force behind idolatry, 1 Corinthians 10.14-22. Satan has always wanted to be worshipped, and the demons lead unsuspecting men to satisfy Satan's desire. Demons work through people. This is why Paul instructs us not to fight against, quote, flesh and blood, end quote. Satan works in and through unsaved people. See Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. But he can also work in and through saved people. Remember Peter, Matthew 16, 21 to 23, and Ananias of Sapphira. The Christian soldier needs to be alert at all times. The word translated, quote, demon possessed, end quote, Matthew 4, 24, 8, 16, 28, 33, 9, 32, 12, 22, and 15, 22, simply means demonized. I do not know of any scripture that explains the relationship between the demons and the person who is demonized. We know the results and we know the cause, but we do not know the details of the relationship between the two. Certainly demons can take control of a person who yields himself to them, if there is some unclean thing in a person's life, this gives the demons a foothold. Can demons possess a Christian? Theologians debate the issue. I have a feeling that the problem lies with the definition of possess. What does it mean to be demonized? How extensive is the possession? I have personally discussed the question with reputable Christians who have confronted demons in the lives of believers. One of my missionary friends has had considerable experience in this area. If the flesh can still work in a believer who is indwelt by the spirit, so can the devil. Perhaps the terms demonic influence or demonic obsession would be better than demonic possession. However, this much is true. Demons can and do influence and use people who are saved. While we have no precedent in the Bible for casting demons out of saved people, we do have precedent for fighting demons who seek to influence saved people. Ephesians 6.10-18 was written to Christians. If the demons cannot succeed in luring us to the grossly unclean things of sin, they will move to, quote, higher ground, end quote, and their temptations will be more subtle. After all, Satan, quote, disguises himself as an angel of light, end quote, 2 Corinthians 11.14. He uses religion to ensnare people. Morality without the righteousness of Christ is one of his chief traps for catching and holding lost people. The drunkard, the dope addict, the thief all know that they are sinners, but the self-righteous church member is convinced that he is a saint. Their outcome. An incident and a parable from the life of Christ helps us answer the question, what will happen to Satan and his army? Then there was brought to him a demon-possessed man who was blind and dumb, and he healed them, so that the dumb man spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and began to say, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, The man cast out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. 
And any city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebul cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Consequently, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? Matthew 12:22-29. Christ invaded Satan's kingdom when he came to this earth as a man. Satan, of course, knew that he was coming, and he did all in his power to prevent it. Satan even tried to kill Jesus after he was born. When he invaded Satan's kingdom, Christ also overcame Satan's power. Quote, the strong man, end quote, came face to face with one who is stronger. In his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus Christ has completely overcome Satan's power. Today he is claiming the spoils. He is rescuing sinners from Satan's dominion and then using these changed lives to defeat Satan's forces. Like David, who slew Goliath and then used the giant's own sword to cut off Goliath's head, Jesus Christ defeated Satan and is using the spoils in his own warfare. Jesus, quote, led captive a host of captives, end quote, Ephesians 4.8, and those captives became soldiers of the Lord. I just want to say here that that's us T.I.s, by the way. Satan, then, is a defeated foe, and he knows it. His, quote, mystery, secret program of lawlessness, end quote, is being restrained by the Holy Spirit in working in and through the church, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 12. When the church has been raptured to heaven and Satan is cast out of heaven, he will have a short time on earth and will destroy everything he can, Re Revelation 12. I believe that's the time we are now living in. But his doom is sure. He and his angels will be cast into a place of eternal fire. Matthew 25, 41. Revelation 21 through 3. The dedicated Christian wants to avoid two extremes when it comes to the matter of demons. 1. Seeing a demon behind every tree. And 2. Treating the doctrine of demons with disdain or contempt. The first attitude leads to fanatical fears. The second to false security. Both are dangerous. If you practice the principles given in this book, which I highly recommend, by the way, you will understand the workings of the demonic forces and you will be able to detect and defeat them. Jesus defeated demons by the Spirit of God, Matthew 12:28, and so may we. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 4:4. 4, 4. Stay strong, stay blessed. Stay close to Jesus Christ. I love you all.